Happy Father's Day, guys. We went to a wonderful restaurant the other night and we had these amazing agrava potatoes, probably the best I've ever had. And today I'm gonna to try, try to recreate. So I went all over the internet and looked for different recipes and I found several, so I'm gonna mix and match and put them all together. I am starting off today with four um, medium-sized potatoes. And instead of slicing them like on a mandolin, what I'm gonna do is basically do a very rough dice. So it's going to be pretty chunky. And after I do that, I'll get them to boil. Now, I do not want to get them to fork tender. And the reason why is because I don't want to get want them to get too mushy when I put them in the oven. We're gonna boil them first, parboil them, get them a little soft, and then after we do that, we will incorporate the rest of the ingredients. The next step that I will do after I, I do this is grate my cheese. So I'm gonna use three different cheeses today, and I'm going to use um, basically Parmesan, which will finish it off. I'm gonna use a cheddar, and I don't have a Gouda, so I'm gonna use a Havarti. So it's gonna be a, a little bit different taste, but I'll grate that, and then the last thing I do will be to make a bechamel sauce, which at that point in time, I'll incorporate some of the cheese. So I will get this going, and I will be back with you in a little bit. I wanted to show you the size of the potatoes that I'm using. Like I said, um, I did four medium potatoes, so this will be enough for three to four people. So we're back. I misspoke a while ago and I said grated. We are shredding the cheese and I'm doing it. I'm cheating. I'm using my Cuisinart and you know what? Cheating is okay. So we started off with uh, cheddar. Um, I am using two kinds of cheddar. I love this cheddar. You can find it at um, Kirk, it's a Kirkland's brand, it's Coastal, and um, it has bits of salt. It's wonderful. But I also have regular plain old sharp cheddar in there. So I've got two kinds. The um, potatoes that we had the other night were not an orangish color. It was more of of a creamy color, so we're trying to duplicate or replicate that. So we have a little bit over a cup of cheddar cheese, and I'm gonna put that on the side. The next cheese I'm going to grate is my Parmesan. I mean, not grate, shred. So we're gonna, we cut the Parmesan up. It's gonna get noisy here, so hang on with me. Now this comes from a nice block of, of Parmesan. As you can see, boom, right there. Um, I did cut a little bit of the rind off because <laughs> there was wording on it. So anyway, that's, that's done. And you can always save this little bit, these little bits and pieces. They're perfect for soups. So if you're gonna make a vegetable soup, oh man, in the winter, pop these in there. Um, any kind of uh, stews or anything, you need a little bit more boost to it, that's great. So I'm gonna take this out. The last one that, the last cheese I'm going to do is a Gouda cheese. And I do the Gouda because it is, it's soft. No, I take it back, this is the Havarti. It's not the Gouda, it's the Havarti. So I didn't have Gouda, so we're going with the Havarti. But it is, it's still a soft cheese and it will muck up your food processor. So what you wanna do is do it last so that'll be the last cheese you have to deal with. Um, my potatoes right now are still in the process of cooking and they are still rock hard. So we're into it approximately seven or eight minutes. So they have a little bit longer to go. Remember what I said, I don't want to overcook them because they will get too mushy as we bake them. So we need to be careful. We're gonna monitor them as we go along. All right, we've got this cut up, so we can put it in the feed tube of the food processor. See how easy this is? And you can, when you use a food processor, 
plan out your ingredients so you can reuse the food processor and not have to wash it each time. All right. See how fast and easy that was? So we've shredded one, two, three, three and a half, four cups of cheese in that amount of time. You can buy a nice fresh cheese and then do this yourself. You save money by doing this. You will have to clean the food processor after this. So just remember to do your soft cheeses toward the end. You can see, see how it pumps up in there? All right. Now, I'll be back because I have to get the butter ready and the flour ready because we're gonna start the bechamel sauce. So we'll see in a couple minutes. We're back and I have my little saute pan right here. I have two and a half tablespoons of butter and I'm using unsalted butter. That's, it's up to you. Right here, I have sprayed a glass casserole dish liberally with olive oil spray. So you can see here's my olive oil sprayer and we got way up the sides because potatoes and cheese will stick. So we wanna make sure that it's not too messy. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this butter melted. I'm making the bechamel sauce now and the potatoes have already come out. They are, they've cooled a little bit, but they are not cooked. They are just slight, they are undercooked because I don't want to overcook the potatoes in the oven. So here we go. The butter is almost melted. I have three and a half tablespoons of white, just all purpose flour, which I'm going to put in there. Now, very similar to making a roux, but you're not going to brown it. So my Cajun friends, we are not browning this. On the side over here, I have two cups of milk. I may not need all the milk. So we'll see. Remember I said that I'm not really following any specific recipe. We are going, we're taking bits and pieces of several recipes and we are giving this a try. And uh, Mark's getting this for Father's Day, so hopefully it'll come out good. So I'm watching this and I'm smelling it. You, it changes the, the aroma of the flour and uh, butter mixture changes as it's cooking and it gets a little nuttier as you go along. Maybe like the cook, I don't know. But uh, I have some other things in here too. I am going to use a tad bit of nutmeg. I am going to use white pepper. Now you're asking me why I'm not using black pepper, because I don't want to see the specks. We can have the specks after we serve it, but I don't want to see the specks. Now white and black pepper have different flavors too. If you really want to use black pepper, you can go ahead. Now I don't want this to turn colors. So I am pretty close to it. Let me show you what we look like right there. And um, I need one of those overhead cameras. I did get a new uh, GoPro. So I think we're gonna start trying some stuff out with the GoPro. Now I'm gonna take my milk and I'm gonna start to incorporate this. And we'll see how much we need here. A little bit at a time, making sure you stir. I would use a whisk, but this is a brand new all clad pan and I'm not gonna use a metal whisk in it. I don't wanna scratch it up, that's why I'm using this wooden spoon. I love my all clad. So it's very pasty right now. So we're gonna continue to add milk until we get the right consistency. And we keep stirring because we don't want lumps in this. So be very diligent about stirring and smoothing it out. Now it's very pasty. Remember that paste that we used to have when we were in school and you, I know some of us ate some of it to try it out because it always smells so good. It's about that consistency at this point in time. We're giving that a good stir. I don't know, I was in kindergarten in the 50s. So back then we had that, it wasn't very safe to be honest with you. We were in an old gym and um, you know, it, there was no OSHA back then, put it that way. All right, we're getting we're getting some consistency here, almost. We're not to the point, we're gonna put, put a lot more milk in there. Now I could use heavy whipping cream. Mm, I'm not gonna do it though. Um, 
it, the potatoes that we had the other night were very rich, very good, but I think with the amount of cheeses that we have, I don't think we're gonna need that. So I'm going to put my oven on 350 degrees. And like I said, this is an experiment. I think to finish it off though, because I'm gonna finish it off with some more Parmesan cheese, to finish it off, I'll turn it up to 400 or even under the broiler. We'll see, we'll have to see as we go along. So you get to, you're get you getting to play with me today. I don't always uh, just cook randomly. Usually I have a recipe that I'm going with. So this is a little bit different. We're not there yet. I wanna make sure that we get all the lumps out. We're going to add, when we get to a certain point, we're gonna add the potatoes in there. So this is looking good. We want, want those potatoes coated. When we ate this the other night, it just, the, the sauce and the cheese, and it was just, oh my God, it was so wonderful. I'll bet some of you Woodlanders know where the restaurant we're talking about. I'm not gonna say it online because they will laugh at me if they see me trying to, trying to get their recipe. Although, I have to tell you, I was in London, and when we were there, Chelsea and I went out to several restaurants and told the chef I adored the food, and the chef would come out, he'd give me the recipe. I was like, yes, we scored. So we're still working on this, still working on this. There we go. All right, still lumpy. There you go. Got a little ways to go. We're gonna add a little bit more. Like I said, I had two cups of whole milk, not skim milk, didn't wanna go there, whole milk. And like I said, if you wanted to use half and half or cream, you could definitely do that. And if you're using a pot that's not brand new and or pan that's not brand new and um, non-stick, you can use a whip, whisk and it will make your life much easier. All right, go ahead and add a little bit, a bit more of that and finish that up. Now, here's the trick. So this is the Parmesan. We're gonna hold off on that. We're gonna start with the, uh, the cheddars. We'll put that in here first. Oh, nice. And we're gonna lower the fire. I don't wanna burn the cheese. And get that all incorporated. And a the piece of parsley, we don't want that in there. Okay. So remember how I didn't want too orangey of a sauce. I'm gonna add my nutmeg right here. Just a little pinch of it. Just a little pinch of it. I'm gonna add the ground pepper, the white pepper. Remember, I said I didn't want black specks, so we're going with this. But you can add black pepper later. A little bit more. You know how we love pepper, we're fiends. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt. All right. There we go, get that all mixed, up, mixed in. Then we're going to add the Havarti. Now remember, it was supposed to be smoked Gouda. I don't have smoked Gouda, so we're going with the Havarti. And see how soft that is? Yeah. Oh, pretty. It's gonna make a nice sauce. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Can you see that? I don't wanna turn it too much because it's gonna, it'll get a little crazy and pour out. Get that pepper mixed up. Some of the pepper's clumpy on that. That white pepper's a little bit different. I'm gonna add about half of the Parmesan. There we go, get that mixed in. And then, we're going to take this, let's do it in this bowl first. Put that right in there. Remember, we've got four potatoes. I'm gonna do it right in there. This is one of those heat-proof bowls. They, they sell them at the H-E-B, the borosilic bowls. Love it, it's been really good. All right, I'm gonna pour that sauce right over there. We might have a little bit too much sauce. Maybe we need to save that for something else. I think I will save it for something else. Sounds good, I'm gonna turn up the fire here. Let's toss this around. Let's see if we get all the potatoes coated with this. Perfect, 
Oh my. Ah. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is not low calorie, low calorie, just saying. So if you, if you see me on the street, go, God, Tina, look what you made. You know what? Sometimes you just gotta go for it, it's Father's Day. And if you exercise a couple hours, work it off. Okay, let me show you what it looks like. Boom, that's what it looks like right now. So it is going to go into this glass baking dish. There it goes. Oh man. And like I said, I have some bechamel left. I'll use that for something else. I think I can whip up something really good. And uh, maybe, maybe some macaroni and cheese. I don't know, it sounds like a plan to me. All right, so we've got this all ready to roll. Shake it out. Let me let you look at it. Boom. I'll give it a taste to see if the sauce is just about right. And, yep, yep, oh yeah, definitely. Now, we're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven. But right now, I can stop the whole process and just let it sit until I'm ready for dinner. So we have a couple hours before we will need to put it in. And I think since the potatoes aren't totally done, it's probably gonna take about 35 minutes. We'll stop it toward the end and then finish it off with the rest of that Parmesan cheese. And I think we'll be good to go. It'll go perfect with the fillets we're gonna have. So we'll be back a little bit later. Guys, we're back. These super cheesy potatoes just came out of the oven and we cooked them for 35 minutes initially and then put them in again for another 10 minutes to get everything melted on top when I added that extra cheese. So we've got them, they're coming out. Oh my God, they look amazing. Dish this up and I'll bring the plate over so you can see it a little bit better. Oh yeah. Now, let's bring this over here so you can see. How's that? Can you see that? Anyway, that's it. So give this a try.